Uh, my name is Jason Dorland, and uh, I was a member of the Canadian National Men's Eight in Seoul, in rowing, in, uh, in 1988, which was more than a few days ago. And um, in that crew, we had five members of the 1984 crew from Los Angeles who were defending, who had won and now were defending Olympic champions, which made our entire crew, uh, which made the goal pretty clear, right? The goal was to go to Seoul, <clears throat> defend that Olympic championship and, and come home with a gold medal. And um, we expected it, our coach expected it, our family, friends, the press. Um, but, uh, you know, our expectations aren't always met the way they think they are going to be met. And when we were no different, we didn't not just win, we came sixth in the final, right, DFL. And, um, <clears throat> you know, that was a moment for me as a 25-year-old, very young man, very... Um, unworldly, as it were, a uh, very protected life as a professional athlete and um, just wasn't prepared for that moment of, of defeat on the world stage. And um, wow. So my transition was rough. It was not pretty, but um, like so many athletes. Um, but today, uh, all these years later, myself and my wife, Robin Marr, who is herself a multiple Olympian, middle distance runner for Canada, 17 years on the national team, uh, ranked top 10 umpteen times, right, in the world. And, um, you know, she's impressive. Her resume is impressive. But, you know, for me, what's more impressive about Robin is how she did it, right? Who she was when she was competing. And who she was was the polar opposite of me. Um, what I was taught as a young athlete was uh, hate your competitors, destroy your competitors, crush them, you know, some very... Uh, demeaning language and the purpose, the goal always was to win, right? To never lose because winning was right, losing was wrong. And fair enough. It's what we were taught. It was what was normal, if you will. And that was my strategy as a young athlete and uh, certainly became my strategy as a young coach when I retired from rowing and began coaching. I mean, it's what I knew, right? It's what I was taught. And like so many coaches, I coached the way I was coached. And... Um, so in our coaching practice now, Robin and I work as performance coaches. We work with organizations, professional teams, education, you name it. And uh, wow, my advice, the way we coach now is so different than what I grew up learning and knowing. Um, we have an expression in our coaching practice where people in the face of adversity ask themselves, how can this be the best thing that ever happened to me, right? Where's the opportunity in this? And you know, if someone had asked me on the day, September 25th, 1988, you know, I don't imagine my answer would have been um, very nice, right? And it certainly wouldn't have been focused on opportunity. Uh, what it would have been focused on was the shame that I felt in, in losing. Um, but now, all these years later, for sure, there it, it was truly the best thing that ever happened to me. And, um, and... Why I say that now is because what I learned, right? What I learned in the face of that loss or in the reflection of that loss. And what that was, was that what I was taught was a lie, right? Focusing on outcome, focusing on competitors, trying to destroy, getting a hate on before a race. That was all a lie. Uh, I understand that, that Hollywood and media and a lot of professional sport organizations um, imbue the notion that, that uh, sport is, is combative, right? It is about getting a hate on and trying to kill your competitor. And, and I get that. I mean, goodness, I grew up in that. And, uh, and we would never argue that that doesn't work because it can work. We would just uh, invite you to consider that it doesn't work as well as what we do now, right? Which is what I've embraced now is this notion that <clears throat> that you compete with your competitors, not against. And I realize it's a bit of a, it's a bit nuanced. It's maybe wordsmithed. It's however you want to make it, but, but it's the truth, right? And, and what I've learned now is that the root, the Latin root word of competitor or competition is competir, which means to strive together. So in North America, anyhow, we have completely bastardized the whole notion of, of what real competition is, of what it's supposed to be. And, and made it about, um, you know, made it a combative paradigm, right? Where you are trying to kill and destroy your competition. 
So not only is that dysfunctional and unhealthy and all that kind of stuff, but it's actually a really crappy strategy because it gets in the way of you finding your best self on the day. When we focus on striving with, we embrace a synergistic paradigm, right? And that was the cool thing about Robin in watching her race um, as a young athlete was that she had this mantra, it used to drive me crazy. It was um, together we fly and she used to use the analogy of geese. She'd ask me, well, well, why do geese fly in formation? And I said, so they can fly, so they can fly faster and further. She said, exactly. When I run with my competitors, we run faster and further, all of us. And then the fastest runner on the day comes away as the victor. Fair enough. And I thought, well, okay, I can't, I can't argue that. And, um, and I can't argue her career, right? I can't argue her, her resume. It's impressive. Um, and all done under the guise of this notion, together we fly. And so what we encourage coaches to do today, especially working with professional athletes, is to let go of that old school approach of trying to kill your competition, trying to focus on um, this notion of, you know, uh, killer be killed or killer instinct and all this kind of garbage and really embrace process, really embrace this notion of competing with your competitors. Because what we believe now is that, uh, or, you know, what we invite coaches to consider now is that from your competitor's best race, you will find your best race. And, and that is the meaning of sport, right? Is, is competing together. That's the beauty of it. That's the opportunity of it. That's the possibility of it. So something to consider.